I am Anil Kumar and now we will explore some higher order derivatives. The question here is, a ball is thrown upwards and its height h in meters above the ground after t seconds is given by h of t equals to minus 5 t square plus 30 t when t is greater than or equal to 0. Calculate the ball's initial velocity. Calculate the maximum height. When does the ball strike the ground? and what is its velocity at this time? What does second derivative of height represents? So I'd like you to pause the video, answer this question and then look into my suggestion. Now the first part is calculate the ball's initial velocity. In this case it is rate of change of height. So h dash of t gives us the velocity, right? So let's find the derivative of the function which is minus 5t square plus 30t. So the derivative will be minus 10t plus 30, right? So that becomes the derivative using the power rule and combination of these derivatives. Now it says calculate the ball's initial velocity. Initial velocity means when t is 0, right? So h dash of 0 will be, we'll substitute 0 here, first part is 0, we are left with 30. The units are meters per second. Now in word problems, writing units is very critical. You should always include them in your answer. Part B is calculate the maximum height. Now to find the maximum height, we can use this velocity function. Velocity will be zero at maximum height since that is the turning point, right? So h dash t equals to zero will give you that the maximum velocity time, right? So what we do is calculate the maximum height. So let us find when is the velocity zero. We'll find the time here, substitute that time there, and then calculate the maximum height. So let's first find the time, equating velocity to zero, that is h dash t. So the equation is minus 10t plus 30, solving for t, at t equals to 3, it will be 0, so we get t equals to 3. Now, we need to find maximum height. That means height when time was 3. So substitute 3 in height formula. So we get minus 5, 3 square, plus 30 times 3. You can use calculator to answer your question, right? Calculate your answer and then figure it out. So it is 9 times 5 is 45. You have to take away 45 from 3 times 30, which is 90. So we do get 45 units are meters. Okay. So that becomes your maximum height. When does the ball strike the ground and what is its velocity at this time? So to find when it strikes the ground, height becomes 0. So what we need to find is 0 from the very first equation. So, so we'll calculate for, let me now use a different thing. So, so we are trying to solve part C going here. So I'm rewriting this equation. So, so as ball strikes the ground, it means h of t equals to zero. So we'll calculate what time it is. So zero equals to minus, so we'll factor this, okay? So let me factor this, I'll write minus five t, and then we are left with t minus 6. Do you see that? So in factored form, that is the equation. It gives you 0. So that gives you that at t equals to, we know at 0, you started off, and at 6. So t equals to 0 and t equals to 6 are two different solutions. So it says, when does the ball strike the ground? It strikes the ball, ground means comes back and strikes. That means that t equals to 6. Do you get the point? And what is its velocity at this time? That means we want to find h dash at t equals to 6. So we'll substitute 6 in our formula, which we found in part A. So if you substitute 6 here, you get minus 10 times 6 plus 30, right? So that is minus 60 plus 30, and that is minus 30 meters per second. You see that. So at the time it strikes the ground, the velocity is minus 30 meters per second. Minus here indicates moving downwards.
downwards right so that is what it is so it is moving downwards when it strikes the ground okay so, so what we get here is that the velocity at which it hits the ground is 30 meters per second negative means going downwards part d is what does second derivative of the height represents that is to say that what is the meaning of h double dash t right so if you find that so that will be equals to minus 10 here right so second derivative is minus 10 what does that indicate units will be meters per second square what does that indicate now this is the acceleration due to gravity this that is a displacement change in height then velocity is rate of change of height and this is acceleration so it is a constant acceleration let me write this as a constant because the value is minus 10 constant acceleration as the ball strikes the ground right or comes downwards okay normally this is represented by the value of g force with which all the bodies in on this earth are attracted towards the earth and exact value is minus 9.8 meters per second square uh, why I'm using minus here since this force is being acting in downward direction so we have taken downward direction as negative and that is why we are writing negative values and approximately you can see minus 10 is uh, very close to 9.8 right so so for easy calculations we normally take uh, 5 in our equation so you so many times find 5 here in the equation the reason is it represents the acceleration due to gravity right so it is actually acceleration due to gravity so every body which is dropped is moving at a constant acceleration of minus 9.8 meters per second so that indicates that constant acceleration right now as a part of added exercise what you can do is you can sketch these functions right so and see how they are related right so so a rough sketch is here we have two zeros parabola right quadratic zeros are at 0 and 6 as we found so so these are the two zeros for us one is at 0 the other one is at 6 that is the function height and this is time in seconds correct and that is the maximum height right which is attained when t is 3 so that is what we calculated t is 3 and the maximum height was 45 so this was 45 correct you can see very clearly that as it moves upwards it slows down and again if it moves downward tangent here will be negative so it shows negative velocity the time when it hits is when t equals to 6 and at this time it strikes with the velocity of 30 meters per second negative because it is acting downwards I hope that summarizes and helps you to understand how parabola or projectile motion can be modeled with higher order derivatives and we can correlate different characteristics of such a function. Thank you and all the best.